I give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, which in Hebrew are the wonderful names of the Creator, our Heavenly Father, I Am, which this world has named God, and His beloved anointed Son, which this world has named Jesus. I give honor, respect, and thanks to all the true, faithful, and sincere apostles, elders, prophets, and torchbearers of the nation of Israel, who have willingly endured and risked much to bring forth the truth. Thank you, brothers. In this chapter, we are continuing the conversation of respect towards Satan, having respect towards the spirit of Satan as we would have towards a hungry lion. This is a message to our brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel, the mighty nation of Israel being the so-called Negroes, the so-called Latins, Hispanics, and the so-called Native Americans. We are up against a powerful adversary, an enemy who has been given authority and is subtle and cunning. And if we are obeying the voice and the words of Yahweh the Most High Power, we shall be able to see the spirit of Satan and defend against the spirit of Satan with our holy shield of wisdom. But we must be able to see it. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 21, verse 12. And Yahweh Shai went into the temple of the Most High Power and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them it is written my house shall be called the house of prayer but ye have made it a den of thieves so Yahweh the beloved and anointed of Yahweh the most high power goes into the temple and sees brothers and sisters buying sacrifices ahead of time to give unto the priests so that they could say, all right, I've made my sacrifice, my sin offering, I can go sin now. So Yahweh Shai goes in there, throws everybody out of there, goes to the money changers, flips over the tables, knocks over the chairs. Why? Because he is angry at us, at us. Because we would not defend that temple from the spirit of Satan. We would not defend it. We would not rebuke that spirit. But here we have invited that spirit to the Father's doorstep. We, his holy, chosen, and peculiar, those whom he has a covenant with, we invite the spirit of Satan to his doorstep. When we were out in the wilderness, this is what the Father said unto our forefather, the prophet Moses. The book of Exodus, chapter 30, verse 6. And thou shalt put it before the veil, that is by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat, that is over the testimony, where I will meet with thee. Where I will meet with you. Verse 35. And thou shalt make it a perfume, a confection, after the art of the apothecary, tempered together pure and holy and thou shalt beat some of it very small and put of it before the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation where I will meet with thee it shall be unto you most holy so the father is saying yes build this tabernacle and I will dwell with you I will dwell amongst my people I will dwell amongst my people so Moses and Aaron and the priests did everything that the father had asked them to do. And now we are in the book of Exodus chapter 40, verse 33. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle. So the father was with us, dwelling amongst us in the wilderness. 
Let's see if that's the only time that happened. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 8, verse 10. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of Yahweh. So, our forefather King Solomon, ordained by Yahweh, built a temple unto Yahweh the Most High Power. And when they sanctified that temple, and it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of Yahweh, that same cloud from Exodus 40. Verse 11, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of Yahweh had filled the house of Yahweh. Same thing with Moses. Moses couldn't go in because the presence of the Father was there. Yahweh Shai was angry at us because we would not defend the house of our Father, because we had succumbed to the spirit of Satan, because we had actually invited the spirit of Satan to our Father's doorstep, and that we either weren't aware of it or we didn't care. This is who we're up against. This spirit, this spirit of Satan, this is our adversary. This is our enemy. And we must defend against that enemy for it is a powerful, powerful enemy. It really was an incredible level of disrespect on our part to invite the spirit of Satan to our father's doorstep. We should have defended that with everything we had in us and rebuked that spirit. But here at this late hour, in the last of our captivity, we have that chance, we have that opportunity to defend the voice and the words of Yahweh, the Most High Power, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of all things, the creator and destroyer. This chapter is a direct continuation of the last video, so let us now jump right back in. Think about every time Israelites tried to stand up and fight the devil. Doesn't work out so well, because we're in the last of our last captivity and we need to endure it. And how do we endure? We defend ourselves, as Yahweh Shai showed us. The book of St. James, chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves. We serve Yahweh, the Most High Power. We serve Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. We serve the Most High, the Creator of all things. That's it. There's just no going around it. Submit yourselves, therefore, to the Most High Power. Submit yourselves. We are his holy, chosen, and peculiar. Just submit yourselves to that. Stop fighting it. That's just the way it is. Stop fighting it. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Put up your shield. See, rebuke in the Hebrew means to correct, to chasten, to reprove, to argue with, to judge. So what you're saying when the spirit of Satan comes to you and tempts you, and tries to put resistance and attacks you, you say, no, I'm doing what the Father told me I'm supposed to be doing. Right now, in this moment, I'm doing what the Father told me to, to do. Flee from me, go away. You have no authority here. Then I'll go, as long as you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. As long as we are doing what we are supposed to be doing. But if you're deep in sin, an abomination, are you trying to rebuke the spirit of Satan? Not going to happen. <laughs> Not going to happen at all. Because you're in the wrong. Hey, Prince of all power, throw yourself down. You'll be taken care of by the angels. Don't tempt the most high power. Don't do that. Don't do it. Turn these stones into bread so that you may eat. I need to eat of this word. This word is the life. I'll give you everything you want in this world. Worship me. Nope. Never. That's a direct commandment from the Father. Never do that. Never do that. That's why the Father is so upset with us and put us in this last captivity with all this spiritual fornication. Worshiping idols and deities and demigods and pieces of wood and stone. He's disgusted by it. And it has been a brutal last captivity. Draw nigh to the Most High Power, draw near to the Father. How do you do that? Obey His voice. Obey His voice. 
and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. We are in captivity. We are in the last of our last captivity. This is not supposed to be this is not supposed to be about fame and glory and wealth and luxury. Be afflicted, take the punishment, take the chastisement, take the correction, take the reproof. Take the smack of a loving father across your face, Israel. Take it. We disobeyed, we get punished. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of Yahweh, and he shall lift you up. At the end of all of this, top kingdom and nation on the earth, world, time frame, age, span of time, without end. That is being lifted up. That is being lifted up. Job took his affliction and never cursed the name of the Most High Power, and he was lifted up at his end. Accept that we are in this captivity and accept that the spirit of Satan is here doing its job. The last scripture we're going to in this chapter is the second book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. But I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in the anointed. Yahushai didn't do any incantations. Yahushai didn't do anything incredibly special. But what he did to defend against the tempter, the spirit of Satan, the devil, was to say, I'm going to obey the voice and the words of the Father. That's what I'm going to do. And that is how you defend against the spirit of Satan. He also accepted that the spirit of Satan was doing its job. And so these things seem incredibly simple. <laughs> incredibly simple. But they are not, because we are in this flesh. But they are simple. So when the spirit of Satan comes down, as a matter of fact, there's, there was one of these Christian preachers who literally, mega church preacher, who literally said, the commandments are done away with. All we need is grace. That's insanity. That's utter insanity. The father did not use his finger to write the commandments on a piece of stone to give them unto our forefather, the prophet Moses, to be done away with. They were to be a memorial and a testimony and a contract signed by the finger of the Most High Power forever for us to remember. Not to be forgotten, not to be done away with. The grace is the time period that we have either before Yahweh Shai returns with the heavenly host or before we die to have all of our sins cleansed away. But we have to do that in truth and in sincerity. You cannot just run around saying the name of Jesus and break the commandments. It can't be done. It cannot be done. You're breaking the dietary laws of the Father and you're calling on the name of Jesus because you're sick. Well, you're sick because you're disobeying the voice and the words of the Father. That's why you're sick. And those dietary laws is life. When the creator of something says, yeah, don't do that, don't do that. He created all the animals. He said, eat these, don't eat those. For a reason. But the most tempting thing that the spirit of Satan brings is quote unquote freedom. You're free to do whatever you want to do. You are. You are free to not do those commandments. You are free to be you. <laughs> be you. 
that freedom is a deadly, deadly thing. And that freedom, sadly, is going to have many of our brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel utterly destroyed and ripped apart. Utterly destroyed and ripped apart. What we have set before us to do is one of the simplest things in the world, obey the voice and the words of the Father. And yet in this flesh, it is incredibly difficult. And that is the battle. Make no mistake about it. World War III and the nuclear destruction of America are coming. It will coincide exactly with the return of our King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Savior, High Priest and Brother Yahawashai. Thus saith Yahweh. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Wherefore Yahweh also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Yahawashai every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Yahawashai is Lord to the glory of Yahweh the Father. As it is written, thus saith Yahweh, and nothing can stop it. This is a final warning, Israel. Shake off this world. Remember who you are and come home. All praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai.